There you go. How y'all doing? Everybody good? You can either start by saying something or you can go right to the question. Oh, okay. Uh, well, if, I, if you want a statement, I would say this. I'm um, excited to see everybody back in, in a live setting. That's nice to see some human beings here. Um, and I think that bodes well for the fall, right? I can't wait to watch uh, Keenan sell out for the fall for 2022. And I'm very, very excited to talk to you about the spring ball that we had because there was a little bit of um, an edge to this spring ball that I think we lacked last year. And there was a little bit of uh, some fun to this spring because we have some young players at some key positions, particularly at quarterback. So for me personally, it was a lot of fun to coach some new guys. Now, that's not to say that I'm happy that Sam Howell isn't here, but um, he's moved on and it gave me an opportunity to attack some things with Connor Harrell and Drake May and Jacoby Criswell. And so the, those young guys with some younger energy and, and an eagerness to compete for the starting job added a lot to the atmosphere on the offensive side of the ball. And then just to touch on the other side, I'd say that, um, you know, we, we had some coaching changes and um, Gene brought uh, some tremendous energy defensively. And obviously, they're doing some different things defensively. So it provided new challenges for us on that side. And, I, and you know, Coach Brown, on a, in an overall, from an overall sense, said uh, the, the number one thing that we have to do for this spring ball is improve or increase the amount of uh, competitiveness in every single drill, in every single rep, in every team period. Um, and we did that. It took a little. Uh, Massaging. We, we, we tried a, a few different things to do that. We landed on one by the time we got to practices five and six. And as I said to Coach Brown yesterday in our meeting, I think it was the single most impactful thing that we've done in a spring ball here um, in the four years that I've been here. It, it, it was a, the single most positive impact we've had on our team, the competitiveness that we had every day in practice. And we've heard that from the staff and we've heard that from the players. So the youth on offense, that's been fun. The, uh, the, the coaching change defensively and, the, and the, you know, the atmosphere and the culture that we've had on the defensive side, the challenges that they brought us, that, that's been fun and, and uh, also, I think, progressive for us offensively. And then overall in the spring, I think this, this increase in competitiveness, what might seem kind of elementary, you always want to compete in practice. You always want to compete in spring ball. Everything you should do, you do should be competitive. But when we added a score to everything, it's amazing how much more competitive things got on an everyday basis. And, and the kids, uh, I don't think it got so much to a point where we were concerned about the points and the scoring and not the execution of the play. I think we were trying to execute the play on both sides of the ball. But it just added so much more of that natural competitiveness that you, you get so normally on a game day type atmosphere. And it just added that. And I, and, I, and I said it to coach and I thought that was the single greatest improvement we made heading into this spring ball. And with, with saying that, I, I'll take any questions that you have. You've dealt with quarterback battles before. Speaking sure. About the edge that you talked about, how much that actually help you get even more intel on the guys that are battling? So two things about quarterback battles. One, I really think uh, most of the time, not all of the time, but most of the time, the guys competing for the job wind up deciding the starter on their own, like the crime, the cream races, you know what I mean? It's just Sam and Cade and, and uh, Jace were the three guys competing for the job when we first got here. And the goal in spring ball was to teach them the offense. Not that they weren't competing, they're competing every day, but uh, we weren't naming a starter in the spring. And so we, we got the offense in, we worked on everything we needed to from an offensive standpoint, and we wanted them just to master the, the system. And then in, in August, you know, and they did a lot of work. It was a very productive summer that year. And, they did a, and, and that really kind of lent to the three of them having a chance to, to uh, demonstrate some leadership ability. And then in August, they competed, and, and Sam was the more prepared and the more talented, and, and so I really didn't need to name him. Coach Brown didn't need to name him. He, he established that himself, and so we started Sam, and the rest is history. Now you come to this season, you know, this offseason, and you've got right now arguably two um, 
I say that, and I will tell you, we were very impressed with Connor Harrell's first first spring here, and he's a very talented quarterback. And I think people are going to know who Connor Harrell is before his his career is over. But the two competing for the starting job right now are Jacoby Criswell and Drake May. But the approach is pretty much the same. You know, we we have uh, you know someone just sent me a statistic yesterday about our offense and. In the last three years, we've been top five in a number of categories, and that's great, um, and we're proud of it, but that doesn't affect this year. And the reason I brought that up is even though we've been good at a number of things over the course of the last three years, every team every year has things they have to get better at. And we've got a list of things that we need to improve on offensively, you know, specifically situational football. And so that was the focus for this spring. And we wanted all of our quarterbacks to focus in on getting better with mastering the offense and helping us get better in terms of how we execute situational football. So that's been the focus for them. They know we're not naming anybody in the spring, and Coach will make that final decision um, in, in August camp. And so we're pretty much going to let that thing play out, and we'll make that decision in August at some point. Um, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Right. They're not coaching Sam Howell anymore. What's the challenge with coaching the men? Is there always the players in the Sam? And what have you learned about yourself in that process? It, it's been a lot of fun for me. It's not like I didn't have to coach while Sam was here, but, you know, there are some luxuries. You know, I, the luxuries are you told Sam Howell something once, and he knew it for the three years that he started. Like, we, there wasn't a lot of repetitive coaching. He's not a rep guy. You know, you, you teach it on film, and it typically translates on the field. And he did so much to prepare himself in addition to what we did um, that we were able to progress and grow the offense. Your offense is only going to progress, and it's only going to be run as fast as your quarterback can handle it. Um, and so Sam afforded us the luxury to do some more progressive things and to run the offense at a, at a particular tempo because he could handle it mentally. Um, so... You, and you play to the strengths of your, of your quarterback. Uh, we would love to have run Sam over the course of three years. Um, couldn't do that because of depth issues the first two years. But last year, we were able to do that because uh, Jacoby and Drake provided us some depth. Um, and so we did. And so Sam was a much bigger weapon on the ground than he was the first two years. This year, you know, we've got three guys that are really mobile. They're really good laterally. Um, Obviously, uh, Drake is taller now, and, and, and uh, Jefferson's taller. So we have two guys out there right now that have some, a different stature maybe than what we had before. Um, Jacoby is very, very athletic and very mobile. Drake's very ad athletic and very mobile, and so is Connor. And so we, we did some things to move them a little bit and, and take advantage of their athleticism. I don't think that's a surprise to anybody, but um, when we do land the – starter when we do know who that is then the offense will play specifically to his strengths and to the strengths of the of the starters at every position well it's so hard to project quarterbacks in the nfl um you know sam's got a track on here obviously you know, if he is to become a franchise quarterback and become a star player why would that be why would he be successful uh he'll be successful at the next level because of preparation because of elite arm talent. I mean, he's incredibly accurate. He can get the ball out quick, which I think is a, a huge asset at that level. Um, and then, I, you know, even, even from this level to that level, I think uh, the better you get at making decisions and triggering the football, the more pressure you take off the offensive line. And those are just things you have to do to survive. I, I've really spent a lot of time, I've gotten some really good feedback from Drew Brees after having met him at the Notre Dame game. And the reason he and I struck up some good conversations is I've often um, said I thought Sam from a, you know, a skill set standpoint is very, very similar to Drew Brees, more than anybody else um, from a talent standpoint. And Drew agreed. And, and uh, you know, so what we do is I try to compare notes with like quarterbacks. And, you know, and then, you know, because of Dre Bly, I've gotten to strike up a really good relationship, and we talk weekly now with Kurt Warner, you know, and, and um, I've asked him for some of his feedback with regards to, uh, you know, what can I do? And this was over the last two years to help prepare a guy that's headed to the NFL to help his transition. 
And obviously, as he gets better for that transition, he gets better for us. You know, and so Sam was able to do a lot of those things, and they benefited our football team. Um, and so, you know, I say all that to say this, all of the feedback from different people, Coach Nussmeyer at the Dallas Cowboys, same thing. You know, everything is predicated on quick decisions and quick trigger. You know, and one of our key emphasis going into this spring was sack reduction. And you automatically assume that that is just the offensive line. It's not. Receivers have to get in the breaks at the right time, or it could be a receiver sack. RBs and tight ends, they have the physical requirement to pass protect when we ask them to. And, and those two positions can be responsible for sacks. Offensive line-wise, obviously, we all know that. But sacks are also the responsibility of the quarterbacks. And so that was a major focus. And I think that focus while Sam was here and that focus now, those are the things that I think any quarterback needs to be able to do um, to have any chance at being successful at the next level. And I think Sam does that, and I think he'll be just fine. Bill, in talking to Drew Brees and Kurt Warner and guys that have played at like the most elite level of the position, did they tell you anything that they had noticed about Sam just from afar that you were like, oh, that's kind of – Interesting that you would pick up on that. Well, I, I think they've noticed some of the same things. I mean, it's not hard to, to tell that he has a, a really quick release. You know, it's not hard to tell that uh, you can be really, really close to Sam Howell as a defender and he can still pull the trigger. It's not hard to look at film when you really break it down and watch him throw all the routes that he can make any throw on the field. And I think we all know he has the ability to kind of get out of trouble with his, with his feet. Um, and, and he's also a very physical uh, and, and north-south type runner when he runs the football, which is something I think that may change a little bit in the league just for uh, the sake of staying healthy. You know, you want to be able to get up and play another play here. So uh, sliding is definitely uh, a premium at that level. And, and um, I think you saw Sam run the way he ran this year because he's trying to help our football team win, and he was fighting for every yard, and that's just his mentality. And so now we're doing the same thing with some of the younger guys. You know, Drake and Jacoby and Connor are all, um, they're working on, and because they're athletic, they're working on being a weapon with their feet when it's needed, but not as a primary weapon. We want to make quick decisions, get rid of the football. Uh, we want to hand the ball off and not pull on RPOs when it's not absolutely there. You know, we want to make good decisions and execute on a on a play-by-play -play basis. And then when our feet can help us, when our feet can be a weapon, we want to make it a weapon. You know, and it's imperative that they understand when that is. And that means off scrambles, off run reads in the run game, you know, and off of design quarterback, quarterback runs in the run game. So I, I've been excited because their skill set is a little bit different than Sam's. Um, and, it, you know, we're, we're going to try to play to those strengths because these are the guys that are going to lead our team right now. Mac always, Mac always made it seem like anytime he went by your office, Sam might be in there with you. Um, there is no question, and I. Or have his feet up, or something like. Like, is it is it almost bizarre not to have him hanging out in there with you? To not have him in the building, pestering me to watch film was. Uh, that's not something that occurred often. I mean, we were always in there, and um, I was glad. You know, Coach Chiswick came walking in on a quarterback meeting the other day, and. Um, he said, "Man, you guys are always in here grinding. It just seems like every time he comes by." You know, it's really paid great dividends for Jacoby and Drake and Connor and the rest of them. You know, Jacoby and Drake saw it firsthand by being here with Sam, right? And so now they are trying to, I think, emulate or trying to prepare in the same way that Sam did. And it's wearing off on Connor. Connor wasn't here with Sam, but he, every time he comes into the room, Drake and Jacoby are already there. So Connor's trying to get there earlier and earlier so that, you know, and they're all just competing and they all get along and they all have a, a good attitude with each other. And so Sam's uh, influence here, he's not here anymore and it's still benefiting our quarterbacks because now Jacoby and Drake are taking that and they're teaching Connor and the other guys. And so that's, that's just, um, that's what happens when you have a program that has developing depth you know, and, you, and, and that's starting to happen in a lot of our rooms right now. You know, it's happening in the tight end room. It's happening in the O-line room. It's happening in, in all, you know, Antoine Green and Josh Downs are doing that for the other receivers. And so it's exciting. And we had that conversation yesterday also about we, we do have some young players at some positions that we have to develop. But there's some depth that we're probably not used to. 
you know, more depth across the board offensively than we're used to. And that added to our competitiveness in the spring. And it also adds to having older guys that can teach the younger guys. And there's more of that going on right now than I think ever before. What's it been like um, talking with the different scouts and general managers and coaches in the NFL about Sam? What questions have they had? How's that experience been like the last? So in my experience, and I don't want to speak for any of them, but I don't think many of them in my experience really care what our evaluation is of their physical attributes because they're going to evaluate that on their own. Right, they, they, can, they can watch, they can come see, they can watch him practice, they can watch him throw. He's going through all kinds of workouts right now. They, they can see him on film, even making decisions, running the football, throwing the football. They can track all the throws. They can do all that stuff. Anything you can evaluate visually, they're going to make their own judgment. Um, so very few questions are really about that. Most of the questions are what they don't know. Most of the questions are about their preparation, you know, players in general, but Sam specifically. What's his preparation like? What's his, uh, how does he handle the locker room? What are his leadership qualities? Uh, what's his personality like? You know, he's not a rah-rah, demonstrative, uh, overly vocal guy. Well, does he lack leadership then? Or does he lead in a different way? You know, all those things. They want to know about the intangible things that you can't necessarily always see on film. And so, you know, as Coach Brown will tell you, we're going to be honest. He tells the players that all the time. The, the resume that you develop with your coaching staff in terms of how you handle yourself off the field, in meetings, preparation-wise, training, all that stuff, we're going to be honest about how that is and, and how you handle yourself with all that. So when they ask us, you know, you've got to build based on your reputation and what you do here, you've got to build your own resume, and then we'll be more than happy to share that with those guys. And that is really – Ross, what most of the questions, you know, are, 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 are centered around. Max said quite a few times in the spring that he's concerned about how thin the wide receiver room is. Josh Gallows told us after the spring game that a positive there is that all the guys can play and that because there aren't as many players there, they get added reps and they build more chemistry with the quarterbacks. Have you seen that from that room? And how comfortable are you with the fact that when the two guys come in, there will only be eight guys and you might So, Every year you're concerned about numbers in some room, you know, and, and uh, because we are tempo in nature, uh, we're, we're going to play more people. And I heard Gene talking about the same thing. You know, we, in the old line room, we really want to be able to tell eight, nine, ten guys, you're, you're the starting old line so that we can roll through. Last year, you know, we played seven, right, or may, maybe eight at times when we were healthy. Um, I think we got to eight two years ago. I think we only had seven the year before. You want to get to a point where you have, you know, however many, if there's eight receivers on the team uh, that all have gotten to a standard where they can play and help us, you'd like to roll through all eight of them because that means every time they're out there, they're fresh. You know, I, I said this uh, two years ago in a press conference here, A.J. Brown at Ole Miss, uh, he got 81 reps, an average of 81 reps a game the first three, game, the first three games of the season in 2017. And, you know, he averaged, and I don't remember the numbers exactly, but he might have averaged 101 yards and seven catches and a touchdown. And then we scaled him back to about 55 reps, and we started giving Elijah Moore some reps and, and some other slots some reps. And A.J. Brown's productivity in the game went up. You know what I mean? Now he's getting 11 catches a game, and it's for 130 yards and, you know, a touchdown and a half. And so because we, we played him less, he was fresher, and a truer version of his best, you know, his best in, in terms of him being fresh all the time. And so sometimes Elijah Moore playing at 100% was better than AJ at 70. And so we got more productivity from more guys, even though at the time AJ was the starter and Elijah was the backup. And, and that's what we want at every position. The more our offensive line are fresh, the more the receivers are fresh. So to answer your question about the receivers, we have fewer, but we want to keep them healthy, so we're going to be smart about what we do. Um, there is the advantage that uh, Mac brought up with regards to developing continuity and timing and a relationship between two quarterbacks and eight receivers. That's easier to do when you have 12 or 15. Um, we, we do have, we have eight on scholarship. We have more bodies at receiver. And so we manage it that way. But I think that um, it has forced me to maybe script practice strategically. 
you know, so we're not necessarily throwing bombs six, seven, eight plays in a row and, and, and uh, putting big time mileage on the legs of our receivers. You just script more intelligently and, you know, you might intersperse some of the deep stuff throughout practice when you're practicing so that you're not wearing those guys out. We've been here before. You, you, you deal with that issue during the course of every season due to injuries and different things. So I don't know if it's anything we can't manage. Um, I, I do believe that the, the relationship and the timing with our quarterbacks and receivers has been, it, there's been a benefit. And, and uh, you, could, you could see that as we were connecting on throws that probably were more difficult in the beginning of this spring, they came much more naturally to our quarterbacks and receivers at the end of the spring. Coach, how has the British handled being the number one guy in the running back room for really the first time uh, in his career? British, in my opinion, is a lot like Sam Howell. I mean, it, his demeanor never changes. You know, he's not a rah-rah vocal guy, although I will say he has definitely demonstrated the last couple of years more vocal leadership in practice. Um, but, I mean, he's, you know, it's, it's, it's the age-old cliche, but he is a, a, just a lunch pail, blue collar, I'm coming to work. And his attitude and his work ethic and the way he focuses um, and, and handles things in practice is no different than it was two or three years ago. And the only change with British Brooks has been his productivity. He's gotten more and more productive at running back um, with every year, you know, every play, every day, every practice, every week. And so, you know, he's one of those guys that I know for a fact is 15 days better right now after spring ball than he was when he got here. So, and I don't think there'll be any difference heading into the fall. So he is trying to, and it's coming naturally, um, develop a larger leadership role on the team and particularly on offense and he's done that. He has the respect to everybody on the football team. Uh, I'd easily say he's a team favorite um, and so people respond to him and uh, when you can take a guy like that that's such a high character kid and he's also a leader and he's productive, I mean you're getting the best of all worlds and so I, I'm looking forward to watching British play this year. So I, I think that uh, Josh Downs is Josh Downs, but he got better this spring. And uh, Antoine Green to me, <coughs> excuse me, Antoine Green to me is, uh, he looks stronger this spring even than in the fall. Um, and I, I think he's playing right now with the most confidence I've ever seen him play, um, which, which can make a player dangerous. And I, I think, um, you know, you talk about talent, you talk about conditioning, you talk about youth versus having a veteran out there playing, you know, somebody with experience as opposed to someone who's never done it. All of those things are advantages, and as those things get better, players get better. I don't know, though, if uh, taking a player with all those attributes that has no confidence um, and then seeing him play where he has sincere, legitimate, you know, confidence in his own ability, I don't know if there's any more drastic difference in a player than when he develops legitimate confidence. And that's really where Antoine is right now. And then we see some younger guys like uh, Kobe Pesor and Gavin Blackwell. They're playing stronger. They're making fewer mental mistakes. So, you know, last year, every now and then they would flash because they have athletic ability. But they were still playing, you know, not instinctively. They're pl still playing unsure at times because, one, physically they couldn't handle the rigors of dealing with a nickel and a safety banging on them and all that stuff. This year they're stronger and they're doing a better job. And we, we still want to get better in that area, but they're stronger right now. They definitely know the offense better and they're running around a, a heck of a lot better than they were last year. And so they made, uh, Kobe especially had a tremendous spring. But Gavin and uh, JJ Jones um, and uh, Justin Olson. I'm uh, missing one here, I feel like. But those guys have done a good job. We've asked that second tier of guy, group of guys that don't have a lot of starts. We need two or three of them to develop themselves to a point where we can play them so they can support Antoine and Josh and Bryson Nesbitt and our tight ends who are right now carrying the load in the passing game. And so they all progressed and they all got better in their own ways. And right now, um, all of our coaches are trying to address the weaknesses or the other things that we have to kind of gain ground on before we take, you know, the field in August camp. So excited for Andre Green and what he does Yeah, and you know, I don't, I, I'm always excited about recruits. I'm always excited about the signees. 
Um, our young guys that came in have done some great things, you know, with Connor Harrell and all that. And, and, and we're excited to get Andre and Doc Chapman and Kanyuk and even Spencer Rowland in. We're excited about those guys. And if I miss anybody, I'm sorry. But we're, we're looking forward to them. I'm just never ready to crown an incoming guy before he comes in. And the one thing you can never guarantee, even if they're strong enough, big enough, fast enough, talented enough, you do not know how a human being is going to transition to the college field, the speed of the game. Just leaving high school and coming to college, some handle it better than others. And I have no way of knowing how well those guys are going to transition. I know this. Zach Rice would tell you speed of the game in the beginning of spring ball was, uh, was really challenging. And after 15 practices, Zach Rice was a different player. You know what I mean? Zach, Zach was handling things much better. And, and that's how it is with every freshman. That's how it is with every new incoming player. So I'm excited to add all that talent to our arsenal. Um, and we're going to try to help them with that transition throughout summer one and summer two. But I, I can't really comment on those guys in comparison to the others just because they haven't been out there yet. How do you need to this price? If you have a six foot six guy lining in the slot every once in a while, how does that stress the defense? Well, I, he's just a mismatch guy. And, you know, and, um, you know an, another thing we talked about was just creating some more mismatches. And that's a big part of what we do offensively. But, you know, Bryson Nesbitt poses uh, different challenges than Josh Downs. Right, I mean, you got one's here and one's here, and one you can't catch, and the other one's just a big physical. He's got great range, so he's a completely different talent um, that we haven't had here in the past, and uh, so we're we're going to use him, and we're going to try to focus the football and some of the things that we do to to what Bryson brings to the table. I say that, and you know, one of the things that affords us the ability to to utilize Bryson more is the development of Kamari Morales and John Copenhaver. I mean, we're, we feel great about the tight end room right now. So those three guys, John Copenhaver, Kamari Morales, and Bryson Nesbitt, are all weapons in their own right. They all run well. They all have some speed. They all catch the ball well. Um, they can all block. So, you know, the plan is to make sure that all three of them are a factor in what we're doing this year, probably more so than ever with the tight end position. So Coach Porter has, you know, uh, it's a good problem to have, but he has, he's got a challenge. I mean, he's, he earned his keep this spring now, I'll tell you, because it's hard to get all of those running backs that have showed signs of being able to execute and be productive. It's hard to get them all reps. I mean, it's hard to get that many guys. So, you know, British was British. Um, Coach Brown said, look, let's get British the work he needs, but then we'll pull it back. We know what he can do. So he, he worked and he got his reps. Um, but we probably stole a few reps from British in an attempt to spread the wealth to some of the other guys. You know, um, DJ Jones came back. He's been healthy the whole spring. So that was good to see because he's had issues with, with uh, being healthy in the past. And he had a good spring. So that's a guy we gave more reps to. Uh, there was a plan initially to give Caleb Hood more reps and keep developing him. Um, he's, he's been in and out with injury. Uh, with with uh, his injury during the spring, which is nothing serious, but while he wasn't in there, we were able to buy those reps and give them to some of the other guys. And Elijah Green has really flashed this spring. He had a great spring. This is as good as we've seen Elijah Green. And Elijah brings some, some takeoff speed. I mean, he's got some, some home run speed. If if uh, you know he breaks the line of scrimmage, so he was a he was a bright spot in the spring, and then we've got George Petway here, who is different. George is probably uh, a little bit more, a lot more like Michael Carter, um, twitchy, change of direction, slasher. You know he's going to spin and jump and do all that stuff, and he's he's a different kind of running back than some of the others. So, you know, I I thought it was really challenging for Coach Porter to try and get all of those guys reps where we could fully evaluate them. So that's development that's going to continue in the summer. And, you know, we'll have to kind of whittle it down to the top three or so by the time we get to the opening game. Good problem to have. 
Um, and I, I think just like the quarterback race, it'll, it'll play out. You keep getting them reps, and it'll play out. O-line with Coach Bignell. You, know, you worked with him previously. Yeah. How has this transition been? What's the benefits of him having worked with you? And how do you think that group has progressed under him in the short amount of time we've had? So Jack and I did work at Ole Miss uh, both years I was there. He did an incredible job uh, when I was with him of uh, developing the offensive line the two years that we were there. Um, so he, he knows the offense, and, and um, we developed a, a really good relationship while we worked together there. And so I was thrilled when we were able to, to bring him in. It, you, you hate to see coaching changes because you don't want to disrupt continuity or stability. But it is what it is. And so when, when we lost Coach Cyril's, it gave us an opportunity to, to go and, and uh, grab Jack McNeil. And so he came in. And we have a, a much younger line. Um, we have fewer returning starters with all the starts under their belt that we've had the last two or, two or three seasons. But we do have, we have some staples. And um, one of them is Awesome Richards. And Awesome had a great spring. So we leaned on. These three guys, I think we leaned on, uh, planned on leaning on Awesome and Ed Monolis and Brian Anderson, a healthy Brian Anderson. So we're seeing a healthier Brian Anderson right now than we saw all last fall. So we knew those three guys have proven reps, proven starts. Um, they know the system real well. They're playing with a lot of confidence. And Ed Montillas, has, he's never looked better than he looked this spring. So we were thrilled about those three. And then William Barnes, has gotten better every year that he's been here. So that was the fourth one that we're counting on. And then Corey Gaynor was a tremendous addition. You know, and he and uh, Brian Anderson have been competing hard this whole spring, and he's brought some leadership ability. So Brian's already had that, that role here, and he's done a great job this spring. And now Corey Gaynor came in, and, and he's added some. So we got a great battle going on at center. Um, and, and we feel like we have four or five right there. And then we've got a younger group. It's kind of like the receivers. We have a second tier between um, Caden Baker and, and uh, Travion Green and Zach Rice um, and Q, you know, and a number of those guys that are battling to give us the other three or four guys. And, you know, we, we saw Travion do some nice things. We saw Zach improve over the course of 15 days, excited about him. And I think all of those guys are competing right now, and they all know that if 10 of them can play, we'll play 10 of them. We, we feel like we need eight. We want three guards. We want three tackles. We want two centers. That's the bare minimum. And if we have that, then we have the depth, and we'll play all eight of them. And, and Jack did a good job of that at Ole Miss. He had just said yesterday, I didn't know this, but he had never gone through playing eight or nine linemen in a game until he came to Ole Miss. And, you know, the, the thought process there is the same as it is for receivers. If someone's getting tired, let's roll on the next guy because he can play. Now he's fresh. And so we're able to do that. We're able to stay fresher maybe than the other team. You know, Gene talked about playing eight defensive linemen. Well, when you play teams that can do that, you're, you're playing against four fresh guys every drive. And so you're able to combat that by doing the same thing on offense. And so, I, you know, I think um, it's a tall order for Coach Bicknell in terms of taking the youth. But there was a lot of progress. There's great morale in that room right now. There's great momentum in that room. I think uh, Coach Brown liked the aggressiveness. We're playing across the line of scrimmage. We're playing downhill. We're playing more physical. Um, we saw improvements in pass protection. And again, O-line, that's the whole package that I talked about. But part of it is the O-line. And so we're, we're happy about that. We've got a lot of things that we need to continue to improve on. But I, I think we've got the O-line going where, where we want them to go. Are you still developing Caden Baker as the center, or did the addition of Corey Gaynor allow you to move back to tackle? So Caden now uh, is more of a guard tackle. So he's played tackle. Um, he stepped in in an emergency situation and did a great job preparing in a short amount of time to help us at center. And now I think where we settled in with him is all of our guards and tackles are going to really learn how to play both of those, and that's where Caden is right now, guard and tackle. Phil, I got one from CL on the Zoom. Okay. Uh, about the QBs. How do you quantify separation and how likely is it that the competition will continue when both can play earlier? How likely? What was the last part? How likely that the competition will continue into the season if both can play? Uh, I, I think any time that you can um, declare a starter, 
that you'll want to do that. Although Coach Brown and I, I've had discussions with him uh, numerous times. He's played more than one quarterback in his career successfully. I have played more than one quarterback in my career successfully. And I don't, um, I don't think, if that was the best route to take for the team this year, then that's the route we would take. If, uh, if one guy really rises and he's the legitimate starter, then the other one's going to be a, you know, here's the good thing. If there's a legitimate single starter here, he should be really, really good because he's beating out a really, really good one. You know, and that's the beauty of competition. Uh, at Sam Houston State in 2015, uh, we had a transfer come in uh, the same year that we had the returning Southland Conference Player of the Year, which was our quarterback. And the two of them split time the entire season. You know, and I think we went to the Final Four that year. And, and those are, you know, that was just because both of them could play. Um, I don't know that that's the way we would choose. You'd rather have a guy actually declare based on his execution and his production that he's going to be the guy. And that's most likely what's going to happen. But if it doesn't and we can benefit from the talents of, of two people, then we will. And I think Coach Brown feels the same way or I wouldn't be expressing that right now. And, and that's kind of the approach we'll take heading into August. Uh, Coach, in those particular seasons where you ran dual quarterback systems, at what point in the offseason did you determine that both guys needed to be you know, it kind of happened. I mean, you went into uh, the, the August camp, getting ready for the season, uh, waiting for one of them to declare. And sometimes you get to a point, it's just like running backs. Like, we wanted Michael Carter and Javante Williams to battle it out, and you'd like to see one of them rise to the top and be the legitimate starter. And that never happened because both of them kept getting better, but both of them were such weapons that we decided, look, we're going to play both of them. You know, and, and the interesting thing is, they both rushed for over 1,000 yards anyway, and they both stayed fresh the entire time doing it. And they both had such great yards per carry averages because they knew they had to produce in lesser plays. But it kept them healthier. It kept them fresher. So you saw the best, of, best version of them every time they were out there because neither one of them was getting 80 reps a game. And so I don't know that that's going to be any different if, in fact, we played more than one quarterback. You guys good? Thank you, you guys enjoy your summer. Thank you. Appreciate it.